And welcome back to South Texas Crossfire. This is attorney Joe Flores reminding you to join us each and every week right here on KTMV with the Lopez family. Special thanks to Don Humberto celebrating over 50 years of broadcasting and the Lopez family and my good friend Carlos Lopez, the Ted Turner of hey. South Texas Broadcasting. I have the distinct pleasure to have the congressman elect right here, Blake Farenthold. Welcome. Come on. My pleasure, Welcome to, be my pleasure <laughs> to be here. Well, you know, uh, I I don't think a lot of people, even though with all the rhetoric and the negative at campaigning, I mean, you've, you've survived it like a phoenix from the ashes. Let's talk about, uh, you know, it, I think it just blew everybody away. And, and this is not in a negative way. I'm saying this. People had this idea that that uh, uh, that machine was going to live on forever and it was an upset. I read about it about three in the morning after election day when the final tallies came in and there's still some points as we speak right now being disputed. But people want to know about you, Blake, uh, Congressman. What uh, what is your background? Where are you from? Fourth generation uh, Corpus Christian. My great grandfather, Rand Morgan, uh, came here in the Great Depression. He owned a hardware store in Cleburne, Texas. Lost everything during the Depression when the farmers he'd extended credit to uh, couldn't pay their bills. Uh, there was a track of land out at Clarkwood, you know, which is about halfway between Corpus and Robstown, uh, that was in uh, my great-grandmother's name. And so they didn't get that. He came down, uh, cleared the land, was basically a dirt farmer. Uh, we were fortunate and struck a little oil out there. and. Uh, he, he grew and continued to buy some farm and ranch land. Um, as for me, I, I come from an you know, interesting political background. Uh, my step-grandmother was Sissy Farenthold. Uh, she was a Democrat, ran for governor against Dolph Briscoe when I was a sixth grader. That's right, in the 70s. Yes. Right. You know, she kind of paved the way for uh, women in politics and was a huge advocate for uh, civil rights uh, in Texas and uh, basically the entire world. She still uh, travels around the world fighting for what she believes. And then my step-grandfather was Hayden Head, who was a long time kind of behind the scenes uh, Republican guy. And you know he was instrumental in getting John Tower elected as the first Republican senator, senator out of Texas. Well, and he also had a lot of, just in politics in general in South Texas, and of course his uh, uh, son, uh, Hayden Head Jr., that I've had the honor of, of pre appearing in front of, federal judge, great federal judge, now a senior judge. So you come from a political background, and many people said, uh, where is Farenthold from? Does he have any political? So you have that sort of in your blood. Yeah, we, we certainly had some interesting conversations uh, at, at, at meals. Uh, you know, a whole lot to talk about. Grew up listening to uh, both sides of uh, every argument. And so I really have an appreciation for, uh, you know, the liberal and conservative side. And, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with people who are liberal or nothing wrong with people who are conservative. They just have a couple of different core beliefs. But we are all much more the same than That's we are right. different. Well, what about you and your family and uh, children? And I've seen some great pictures, and I saw some on the Caller Times and uh, the foghorn of the election night coverage. I, I've been married for uh, almost 25 years now. Uh, I've got two wonderful daughters, Morgan and Amanda. Morgan is my oldest. She goes to Texas Tech uh, University. She's a junior there. And uh, my youngest, Amanda, is a freshman at Vanderbilt in Nashville. Oh, nice. Well, I'll tell you, the, one of my one regrets about running for office is I haven't been able to spend a lick of time in, Vander, in Nashville and Vanderbilt. Uh, Nashville reminds me a lot of Austin when I went to college at the University of Texas. It's kind of like Austin from 20 years ago. Oh, It's wow. kind of the vibe I got. The only time I spent there was when I got her moved into her dorm, and uh, I really liked Nashville. Well, and, and let's talk a little bit about the election. I know that they, they came down for the election, and uh, you had a lot of support. And now, it wasn't just you who achieved victory, but it was uh, across the board. Uh, we're talking about trying to give meaning to this. South Texas politics has changed. It has. And, uh, you know, the political landscape and even the Hispanic, there was some crossover vote. We're going to be playing some clips throughout this, uh, you know, interview that we played previously. And we're going to mix in here of election night. And we had Hispanics themselves that were consultants for Republicans for the first time. Right. And um, now let's talk about your campaign. What were your strategies there, not to give away the trade secrets for the next time around? So there, 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 there are no trade secrets. My, my message was the conservative values that I think South Texas grew up with. I really, part of what I think I was successful at doing and part of what I want to continue to do is educate uh, the community, specifically the Hispanic community, that it, if you look at where you 
believe, some of your core beliefs, pro-life for instance, or the value of uh, hard work and making your own way in life. And if you look at where the Democrats stand and where the Republicans stand, uh, a whole lot of uh, South Texans, regardless of their race, are going to line up under the Republican banner. I had a great story while I was on the campaign trail. There was a, a woman uh, in Brownsville that was at our headquarters opening that said she was a school teacher and in a Texas history class they did an exercise where they wrote up on the board the some of the core beliefs of the Republicans and Democrat parties. This was in the Rio Grande Valley, predominantly Hispanic school, and they asked the kids, all right, go stand under the list of ideals that most represents where you and your family stand. And with the exception of I think two or three kids, that entire class stood under the Republican banner. And, you know, and, and a lot of, there's a lot of uh, uh, turmoil going on right now as far as everybody saying uh, the under 30 crowd, you know, we've got a wonderful young woman, Daniel Oldham, who's doing Young Voters of South Texas, nonpartisan, right. that's bringing a lot of voters in. And what uh, the Democrats and Republicans say is it's anybody's election now because yeah. the under 30 can say, you know what, I'm not going to vote Palanca, straight ticket. We saw a lot of straight ticket on the Republican side, truth be told. Well, that, yeah, but was what, do you think that that was an answer towards what's been going on in this country the last couple of years? I, I think the straight ticket Republican was a repudiation of uh, the Obama administration. And there were just a lot of people that were mad and said, the heck with it. Oh, you know, we're done with the Democrats under Obama's leadership. But that's not the way, and, and the Republicans are probably going to get mad at me for saying this, but that's not the way to do it. That's the easy way out is uh, pulling the palanca or I guess it's clicking the palanca now on the electronic ballots. You've got to take a couple minutes and uh, get on the, it's easy now. You can get on the internet and read about these candidates and read about where they stand and you can make your decision based on where they stand and the kind of person they are rather than saying, well, well, my family's a Democrat, we've always voted Democrat, or my family's Republican and we've always voted Republican. I don't think I've ever voted a straight ticket.